hi welcome back almost after two months of a break I'm ready with the series of lectures this time it's going to be a series of lectures on your unified view of various constructions of topology many of you would have seen if you are gone through topology subspace topology quotient topology product topology probably finite product arbitrary product also remains okay but all of them follow the same pattern and there is a universal value property which is very useful to deal with these new constructions these things are never usually brought out very well and the unified view is certainly never shown so the aim of these lectures is to bring out that uni unified view and rest assured if you want to go for higher studies this will be very useful and second I have found when this kind of things appear in various other contexts like functional analysis, Banach, Logarithm theorem, etc., people have tough time to explain, to understand. That's because they have not understood this, what the point we are going to talk about. Okay. And second, if you don't have any such idea, you just want to understand only these things, just to try to listen to, to these lectures, at least this first lecture. And after that, there will be a series of lectures separately for each of these topologies, subspace, product, and quotient topology with a lot more examples in a little more leisurely fashion. Okay. So it depends upon what you want to learn. Okay. Are you ready now? Okay. Let's get started. So I have to share the screen. Uh, yeah. I hope you are all able to see the screen. Let me just check whether both are shown. Okay. Good. Right. So the basic reference, as I said, many text do not textbooks and teachers do not give this. So uh, I wrote an article about 20 years ago, generating topologies, a unified view of subspace, product, and quotient topology. You can download it from this site, https forty space mtts.org.in.ea ea for expository articles. You can do a search by the title itself, generating topologies, you will get it or if you type unified view there will be three or four unified view articles you will get this okay right okay let's quickly say you know in one of the uh, videos i don't remember the video number i think video number 13 i talked about the set suppose x is a set and a is a collection of subsets of x then we wanted to describe the small we know there is the smallest topology on x which contains a okay this is the smallest topology on x such so that a is a subset of tau a okay its existence is very easy to show the next question we asked is there a concrete description okay that we gave tau of a consists of all subsets u of x such so that for every x in u okay there exists a finite set say a1 to an in script a so that x belong to a1 intersection an and this is contained in u okay notice that this collection a1 to ax this will depend upon x uh, and the number also will depend upon x the ch specific choice of these things will depend upon x i hope all of you studied okay so this is the first way of generating a topology that is your uh, persistent reasons okay I have a collection of subsets A which is my favorite sets I want to find a topology on which is these are all going to be open okay then I wanted them to be smallest topology because discrete topology everything is open right so I want the smallest topology and we proved the existence we also give a concrete description please visit uh, lecture number 13 if I remember right go through it okay but there is another way of this is using set theory okay see in modern mathematics especially 20th century functions started playing a more important role after set theory okay I don't want to go too much into this because okay but so many of the things emphasis on functions so what do I mean by that so suppose I have two sets x and y these are at present sets and suppose I have some function x to y okay for some strange reason there is an f which is very natural from x to y okay well it may be or your favorite function right 
and suppose now there are two scenarios what are the two scenarios so maybe i should go to the next page okay so i have a function which is given to me and at present these are sets x and y are sets okay so case one is okay now my x is a topological space that is there is a topology on x namely tau x right then what can i ask so now i can think of this as a function from x tau x there is a topological space but then to assert what i can ask is whether i can find a topology tau on y whether there exists a tau a topology on y so that this function is continuous do all of you understand this spend some time okay x and y are sets for some reason i know there is a very naturally occurring function f from x to y okay then x apparently has a topology now what do i want i want a topology on y so that the function from these two topological spaces becomes continuous the given function f okay now if you have gone through my videos on continuous maps between topological spaces there is an obvious choice for tau on y namely can somebody tell me take tau to be discrete topology in this sorry in discrete topology okay then we have seen let me recall quickly we have seen in the continuous thing this is the fact we have seen forget this a and this suppose a and b are spaces and this has a indiscrete topology then give me any function any space okay this will be continuous you understand that that is if the core domain is in discrete space then i don't care about what is the domain what is the topology on that what is the map from the domain to core domain all of them will be continuous that means there is something weird why then if i take indiscrete topology it has no relation to x no relation to x and certainly no relation to f okay it could have been any map z and any space z with any topology tau z to y tau y indiscrete okay and any map g this will also be continuous therefore the data given namely x tau x and f are never used and remember the indiscrete topology is the smallest topology so what is a very natural question you should ask you should ask for you should refine the question okay refine the question does there exist a largest topology on y say tau or tau f so that f from x tau x to y tau f is continuous think about because indiscrete topology is smaller so i should ask for i want as many open sets okay i want many more open sets in y so that f still becomes continuous why is it very natural condition remember equivalent conditions or continuity says f inverse of b must be open where b is any arbitrary open subset of y therefore if i want to make a challenging problem then i should look for more open sets in y please okay pause review proceed replay this because this is the not the way which is usually taught so many of you will have problem so please was review proceed you should understand why i am insisting on largest two reasons one is if y has indiscrete topology immaterial of x immaterial of which topology on x immaterial of which function of this okay this will become continuous okay the and indiscrete topology is smallest topology on a given set second thing if i want a challenging problem you have to be then continuity of f means f inverse of b must be open for every set b open in y so if i want to give a challenging problem what should i look for is i should get as many open sets possible that is i should have a large number of open sets in y so that to make f continuous becomes challenging problem for me okay take this seriously 
don't go further we, unless you review this very well now there is a second case now again f and x and y okay at present says but now i have a topology tau y on y therefore i can think of this as a function f from the set x to the space y tau y so what do you think i should ask for i should ask for a topology tau on x so that does there exist a topology tau on x so that this becomes continuous this is a question now if you are really passed and reviewed the last case then there is an obvious answer all of you will come up with that is the advantage of thinking okay it's not just you know passive learning what is that there always exists a topology tau namely di discrete topology all right again let me have a break we have seen that if a with a discrete topology okay then give me any function g from a discrete to any y tau y this will always be continuous okay no matter what y and what topology tau y and y and what function you take from a to y this will automatically continuous okay that means if i take the discrete topology here okay yes take tau equal to discrete topology okay but then the data given namely y is given and there is a topology tau y is given on y is given and a specific function f from x to y is given none of these three data is ever used if i use only discrete topology number one and remember it's the largest topology on any given set discrete topology is the largest topology so what should be the question you should ask so what should i again ask so now go back to again so for any b in tau y if f tau b continues f inverse b must be in tau right so what should i ask for i should ask for less number of open sets in x so that f inverse b is still in there are you following if you have gone through the last thing you will understand therefore the question refined question is the following is it does there exist a smallest topology call it tau f on x so that f x tau f y tau y is continuous do you understand the reason why i asked for smallest now please again pay attention review both the things quickly notice that existence of smallest topology in this case is very easy because there is at least one topology therefore if capital t okay is the set of topology tau on x so that f from x tau to y tau y is continuous okay then discrete topology belong to this therefore the set is not empty the set of topologies with this property is not empty therefore intersection of such topologies will automatically be the smallest topology okay which makes f continuous do you understand please okay do not worry about textbook and learning L try to understand the concepts well if you have gone through all these lectures of mine these are the kinds of points which i specifically mention okay such a topology always exists namely tau of equal to intersection of tau where tau is in t capital t okay so pause review proceed please again pay attention both the cases please please review if you want to be a master of topology you should learn these kinds of subtle points very well not simply whatever is class notes or textbooks say right before going further we may ask do such cases naturally occur what do we mean by that what is the first one it said 
okay let's look at the second one i have y as a space to sorry y has a topology and there is a natural map x to y then i want the smallest topology on x such for example such a case okay let's look at a congruent situation for case 2 what was case 2 x is a set o is a topological space and f is a natural map from x to y I, what do I want? I want the smallest topology on X. Right? Such, do such a thing and occur. Let us look at. Suppose Y is tau Y is topological space. Yeah? Now suppose X is just a subset of X. Y. Okay? Just a subset. Right? Yeah. Now you can. Uh, what, do you, can you think of a natural map? f from x to y you see that i said naturally occurring map can you think of such a map here obvious map yeah remember x is a subset of y therefore start with any x here map it to x itself that is f is nothing other than identity of y restricted to the set x yeah restriction of identity of y to x it's it's usually called the inclusion map this is a very natural map. So, what is the question now? I am ask. I am asking now. Call this map as J. Okay. So, J is a map from X which is inclusion in Y. Okay, where X is a subset of Y. Okay, and this already has a topology. So, what I am asking for? I am asking for the, the smallest topology on X. Right. So, we are looking for. okay it will turn out this topology is nothing other than okay it turns out it is nothing other than subspace topology if you had already learned subspace topology okay you will see it's a new way of looking at you arrived at it by asking a question whereas subspace topology usually the teacher defines the textbook defines look at this collection this is topology on x therefore that's called subspace topology okay let's not worry about do you understand this okay so what what was my aim here i my aim was such cases naturally occur let's look at the first case case one concrete example again for case one okay there what i had f from x and this is the topology and i have a y right i want what what did i want I want the largest topology tau on y so that f from x tau x to y tau is continuous okay now such do such a thing occurs uh, do such thing occur naturally yes suppose x is a topological space suppose this is an equivalence relation on x all right you understand therefore i have set of equivalence classes given any x in x i have equivalence classes x right now i want to denote by x by till uh, this is called the quotient set okay yeah consisting of what are its elements consisting of equivalence classes That is, this consists of equivalent classes X as X varies over capital X. You understood that? So, this is going to be my Y. Right? So, I will give, when I come to quotient spaces, I will also look at how to look at quotient sets and uh, how, how to look at uh, this Y, that is, set of equivalent classes, etc., with concrete geometric examples. Okay? 
please wait for that but now we are concentrating only the abstract things so let us look at it now can you think of a natural map yeah from where to where x to x by this this is your y the equivalent class i'm sure all of you know that start with an x where did it go to what is this this is set of equivalent classes so where will x go to i'm sure all of you know that right it will go to so this map is called quotient map or okay this is called the quotient map induced by the relation by the equivalent solution yeah is this clear now yeah okay so now what do i want therefore so what i am looking for i am looking for the largest topology on call it tau on the quotient set so that the map phi from where to where x tau x to this tau this is continuous so once you prove and show that give a concrete description of the largest topology that is called the quotient topology now do you see that those two cases please pause review proceed please understand okay So what do you think we have done? We have done the surface topology and quotient topology both arise out of a natural question. What are the natural question? I have two sets x and y and there is some natural function or my favorite function f from x to y and one of them has a topology. Maybe x has a topology or y has a topology. Then what do I want? I want to find a topology on the other second object and what what kind of topology I want? That's where you have to be curved. Okay. If I want to put a topology on the codomain, that is f from x to y, then on y I want the largest topology. Because otherwise, if I put indiscrete topology on y, then anything is continuous. And similarly, if x is a set but y is a space, then what did I want? If I put the discrete topology which is the largest topology on x anything is continuous from x therefore what i am looking for i am looking for the, the smallest topology on x so subspace topology and quotient topology arise out of your very very natural questions please go through understand okay now there is a slight variation of the first case okay this is case one star this is a, okay this is a slightly variation suppose i have x tau x or a, okay a, a, x1 tau 1 okay and y tau y are topology spaces this is given to me right now i can get a set out of this x and y namely Cartesian product okay you understand that so let x cross y be the Cartesian product of the two sets now crucial word is their sets you now therefore the Cartesian product all right now I said it's a generalization of case one okay now can you think of what should be the question I should ask From x cross y to x and x cross y to y, are there natural maps? Call it pi x and pi y. Are there natural maps? Yes, they are the so called projection maps. That is, ordered per x y 
goes to x here ordered per x y goes to y this is a projection under the first component this is a projection under the second component these are the natural maps now how many of you can think of a natural question now yeah so now question i can ask question is does there exist a topology tau on the set x cross y so that both the maps what are the maps pi x from x cross y to x tau x and this is tau and 2 pi y from x cross y tau to y tau y are continuous Do you see that? Yeah. In the earlier case, in the case one, what did you ask for? X to Y, X is a set, Y is a space. Then I asked for a topology on X, which makes F from X to Y continuous. Here, there are two things. Have you understood this? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, suppose such a topology. Now, again, the answer is easy. What is the natural answer I can say? This is not a good answer put the discrete topology as I said this is I'm a no brainy answer right so what should I ask for how should I refine the question now I'm sure all of you should know how to refine the question okay how should I refine does there exist yeah actually there I will write it a smallest topology tau on x cross y which makes pi x and pi y continuous as earlier so if such a topology comes then I will call it the product topology on x cross y ok such a topology tau is called the the product topology. I'll write the smallest, therefore the topology tau is called the product topology on x cross y. Again, pause, review, proceed. So what I have done? So I have shown that there are three different things: subspace so topology, quotient topology, and product topology all of them okay uh, arose as answers to what to a question to similar similar questions what are the similar questions something like i have certain maps from some between two sets or a set x to y and one of them has a topology then i want a topology on the other second object i will call it optimal topology okay depending upon the context it may be the largest topology or the smallest topology Okay, if x is the dom domain, then uh, if I want a topology on x, then I will call it naturally I want the smallest topology. And suppose I want a topology on the quadomain y, naturally I want the largest topology. And product topology, now there are two functions. Simultaneously I want them to be continuous. That is pi x from x cross y to x, pi y from x cross y to y. I want both of them to be continuous, not only one. So I again what do I want? I want the smallest topology which makes each one of them continuous not only one one if it is only one that is answered in case one whereas case one star both need to be continuous now do you see that how all these three follow the same pattern okay now before I end the lecture I will quickly do the surface topology today okay with that I will stop the lecture so let us look at question 1 we will answer this so what is question 1 x is a set y tau y is a space I have a natural function x to y ok I am looking for what kind of topology I am looking for the smallest topology call it tau so that f from x 
tau to y tau y is continuous. Notice that as I already explained, there exists at least one topology which makes this function continuous. Therefore, intersection of such topologies will be the smallest topology. Therefore, existence is guaranteed. Okay. The only thing is we want a concrete description. So let's go slow. And if you have been watching my videos, many of my videos, be it analysis, algebra, linear algebra, algebra, or topology, or calculus, or nothing, you'll see. I am fond of working backwards. Suppose such a topology tau exists, then what should happen? So I will write it work backwards. For what purpose? The goal is to find find a concrete description, explicit description, concrete or explicit. Discussion of tau on x. Okay, so suppose such a tau exists, then what should happen? Give me any y, sorry, give me any v in tau y, then f inverse of v must be open because f is continuous, right? With respect to tau topology, therefore f inverse v must be open in the tau topology. You understand that? So whatever open set v in tau y you give me f inverse v must be in tau yeah now if you have learned these inverse images okay that was a separate video in foundations if you have learned that you know inverse images behave well with respect to set theoretic operations okay i do not get into that you you should okay so you should re review this okay review the video I think it's video number three on crash course and foundation okay what do you want to learn about inverse images okay this is a very important thing please don't forget learn that well okay now what does it do it tells me quickly if I, you have already learned that thoroughly then let us look at the collection of sets f inverse v where where is it tau y okay then this collection as i said this tau y is already a topology that means what it is closed under arbitrary union closed under finite intersection the rest of the things are also there okay empty set we are there etc okay now what should i expect therefore if i had understood my video on uh, inverse images you should know the i should expect i expect this collection is well behaved under arbitrary union and finite intersection this is my expectation I need to prove it so if that happens then it's all as good as a topology except I have to prove empty set belong to that and X belong to that do you follow that if this expectation is correct okay then this is almost a topology yeah let us go slow so I claim okay this is a topology call it tau naught I claim tau naught is a topology on x let us prove it to prove tau naught is a topology on x what are the thing I have to prove whether empty set belong to tau naught that's clear because empty set belong to tau y and therefore f inverse of empty set is empty set recall what is f inverse of b if b is a subset of y f inverse of b an element x belong to f inverse of b if and only if fx belong to b okay this is a very okay this is the mantra to deal with inverse images okay, learn this well yeah. an element belong to f inverse b if and only if fx belong to b therefore i claim f inverse of empty set is empty if x belong to f inverse of b that means fx belong to b which is empty set that's a contradiction therefore there is no x which belong to f inverse b okay this is correct okay please pause review 
proceed if you have not seen this kind of thinking you should break it and do it and second does x belong to this okay how do i prove that okay i let's look at f inverse of y what is f inverse of y remember y belong to tau y therefore f inverse of y must be in tau y, tau not by definition okay right now what is f inverse of y when does x belong to f inverse of y if only if fx belong to y remember f is a function from x to y therefore give me nx in capital f fx is always in y that means every x in capital x please i find that when i dealt with the audience they had a lot of problems with this kind of thing because inverse images is never taught okay please go through my videos this shows for every x in capital x okay x belong to f inverse x f inverse y why because fx is always in y right that means f inverse of y is a subset of x but x is a subset of x therefore f inverse of y equal to x okay and since y is in tau y therefore x must be in tau naught okay pause review proceed now let's look at arbitrary union suppose ui is an arbitrary union and tau naught i want to know whether union ui i in i whether it is in tau naught where i is in i okay that's again easy now ui belong to tau naught that means there is a vi again tau y so that ui is f inverse of vi this is true for all i yeah now what is union ui therefore union ui i in i is nothing other than union f inverse of vi i in i is it clear because each ui is f inverse vi for some vi now this is the place where we are using the inverse images behave well with respect to set theoretic operations this is same as f inverse of union i in i of vi okay learn this well okay from my video this is very easy to prove if you want i can give a proof but i don't want to okay let's one line proof suppose x belong to this that means what x belong to one of the f inverse vi that means fx belong to vi if fx belong to vi then fx belong to union vi that means x belong to f inverse of union vi i am going through deliberately fast because you have to learn okay no shortcut okay learn now what do i know about this now vi's are open in tau y therefore union vi is an open set v in tau y therefore this is f inverse of v for some v in tau y that means this fellow is must be open in tau not remember please stay focused you ui's are in tau not and i want to prove union ui is in tau not when does an element belong to tau not when does u belong to tau not if and only if there is a v in tau y so that u is of the form f inverse v have i proved it i proved union ui is nothing other than f inverse of v what is v v is union vi okay please pause review proceed so the last one finite intersection let us uh, look at u1 and u2 both are in tau not then i have to say u1 intersection u2 is in tau not this is a question again ui is f inverse of vi vi is open in y now what is u1 intersection u2 this is f inverse of v1 intersection f inverse of v2 and again as i said inverse images behave well with respect to intersections arbitrary intersection in particular finite intersection this of course this is nothing other than f inverse of v1 intersection v2 okay again learn this well 
in fact arbitrary is true now what uh, what do i know about v1 v2 v1 v2 are open in tau y therefore v1 intersection v2 is again in tau y call it v therefore this is f inverse of v therefore i have proved this object is f inverse of v for some v in tau y that means u1 intersection u2 is in tau naught have you understood therefore we have proved tau naught is a topology on x pause review proceed okay now next claim i want to make is okay f from x tau naught to y tau y is continuous i, I claim this this is by very construction if you had understood to prove this is continuous what should i do give me any v in tau y i want to know whether f inverse of v belong to tau naught but what is tau naught tau naught consists of only f inverse v where v varies over t y you understand that this is by very construction of tau naught very definition of tau naught yeah therefore this is continuous have you understood this very good next now notice that tau is the smallest topology topology on x so that f from x tau x to y sorry tau tau y is continuous not tau x just tau right and we proved if tau is any topologies okay so that f x tau y tau y continuous then we have proved okay give me any v in tau y then f inverse v must be in because this is a small topology which makes continuous therefore given any v this is continuous you understand that means my tau naught is contained in tau because the, these elements are already in tau naught therefore yeah are you following given any u in tau naught then there is a v in tau y so that u is f inverse of v you follow that yeah now since f is continuous with respect to tau topology f inverse me must be in tau topology is an element of tau topology but u was an arbitrary element of tau naught we have shown that u belong to tau that means tau naught is contained in tau pause review proceed now something interesting happened therefore what i have shown is f from x tau naught to f y tau y is continuous and f from x tau to y tau y is continuous and tau tau is the smallest topology with this property making f continuous and the tau naught is already contained in tau so what do you think you can conclude come on therefore tau naught equal to tau these four facts imply tau naught must be tau tau is the smallest topology but tau naught is already making f continuous and tau naught is contained in tau therefore tau naught must be equal to the smallest topology do you follow that so we have to give a complete description of the following problem so we have a complete description so let me look at f from x to y and y is has a topology tau y then i am looking for this okay tau f the smallest topology or tau on x so that f from x tau f to y tau y is continuous okay now i have a concrete description of the topology namely 
tower is nothing other than f inverse of v as v varies over tau y that's it so now let's apply this to our concrete so i have now let me just change the notation now let x tau x be a topological space and a is a subset of x then i have a natural inclusion map a in x that is j is identity of x restricted to a okay so what is the smallest topology so tau j is the smallest topology making j from a tau j to x tau x continuous right we are just proved this is a special case now what is tau j we also say what is tau j tau j is j inverse of let me write u where u is in tau x right i wrote f inverse of v but uh, for y since it's in x i am writing u you understand now i only know how to know what is j inverse of u j inverse of u is j is a map from where to where a to x therefore j inverse of anything u will be a subset of a do you understand therefore j inverse of u is set of all x in a such so that j of x belong to u right f inverse of v what does it mean x set of all x in that such so that f x belong to v here but what is j x j x is nothing other than a x itself that is x belong to u therefore what is this set this set is nothing other than u intersection a yeah pause review proceed so what is the subspace topology tau says tau j is nothing other than therefore u intersection a where u is in tau x do you recognize this so this is the subspace topology okay pause review proceed so i hope you enjoyed so we have seen by asking we we are given naturally occurring map between sets and spaces or spaces and sets then we are looking for optimal topology on the set which makes the given natural function continuous by applying specific cases we arrived at subspace topology quotient topology and product topology using so in the, in the first case namely where x is a set y is a space then i gave the smallest topology concrete description of the smallest topology on x namely f inverse b b contain b open in y and as a special case we look we got the subspace topology this is what we have done today in the next lecture we will look at quotient topology and perhaps product topology first and then quotient topology later yeah please go through it okay as i said if you understand 30 40% it's already good enough you will really thank me later in your life yeah okay have a good day till then till we meet bye